good morning girls today we, in this session we are going to discuss about destructors in inheritance access specifiers virtual functions abstract classes pure virtual functions and multiple inheritance in the last session we have discussed about constructors in inheritance all of you know that constructor is a special method which is used to construct an object and destructor is also a special method which is used to destroy the object both the constructor function and destructor function will have the same name that is the class name to differentiate between the constructor and destructor destructor function is preceded by a tdle symbol so this is the syntax here you can see the syntax of a destructor now let us see how the constructors and destructors work in inheritance now this is an example where there are two classes one is base class second one is derived class derived class is derived from base class base class contains one constructor and one destructor derived class also contains one constructor and one destructor all of you know that when a constructor when an object is created in the main function for the derived class automatically that object creation statement will invoke the derived class constructor and the derived class constructor in turn will call the base class constructor now here you can see the output first the base class constructor function is invoked that is uh, uh, based out in the output you can see base class constructor is printed then derived class constructor is printed so when a derived class when we create an object for the derived class that object creation statement will call the derived class constructor which in turn will call the base class constructor after executing the base class constructor then derived class constructor is executed whereas with destructors it is reverse reverse in the sense here first derived class destructor is called is executed then base class destructor is executed it's quite opposite to the constructors you can see it in the output so destructor function is called when automatically the life or the scope of the object is completed that is when the main function is closed automatically destructor function is called so when the destructor function is called in inheritance first the derived class destructor function will be executed so when the derived class destructor function is executed you get the output derived class destructor after completing the execution of derived class destructor then the control is transferred to base class destructor then it executes base, base class destructor now here you can see the output so this is about destructors in inheritance constructors and destructors in inheritance now let us see access modifiers in inheritance access modifier or you can call it as access specifier it generally sets the accessibility of the class members there are three types of access modifiers which are available in c++ they are public private and protected till now you have seen how the public works and how the private works what the default access modif access modifier of a class is private if uh, if we have given 
the member as a public member if we declared the members as the public members then everyone can access the public members with the help of an object if a cloud data member is declared as a private member only with it can be accessed only within the class and by friend functions now protected protected data type generally will be using when we are using inheritances so here protected data type also works like private but the difference is private data cannot be inherited to the derived class but protected data can be inherited to the derived class now this is a figure here down you can see the figure how the data is how the uh, members are uh, access specifier is modified in the derived class now in this we have base class access specifier and uh, derived class access specifier so when i am deriving a class i can derive the class in three modes all of you know that public derivation private derivation and protected derivation when we derive the class in public public derivation then if the base class public members be, becomes derived class public members base class protected members will become derived class protected members and uh, whatever the type of inheritance private data is not inherited private data is not inherited whether it is public derivation protected derivation or private derivation private data of base class will not be inherited to the derived class so now we are dealing only with public and protected public data if it is a public derivation the uh, derived class also contains the pub, uh, same public members are inherited as public protected members are inherited into protected section but if it is protected inheritance protected inheritance public data when it comes to the child class or derived class it becomes protected data and protected data will be in the protected section itself and when i am deriving the derived class in a private mode private derivation then whether it is public data or protected data base class public data will go into the derived class private section and base class protected data will go into the private section of derived class so that we should remember so whenever you are writing programs we can we have to use either protected or public to inherit the data of base class to derived class if any private member is there that private data will not be inherited to sub classes derived classes it is only hidden it is not accessible okay so this is the access modifiers access specifiers how the access specifier work, specifiers work in inheritance now let us see virtual member functions this is a very interesting concept girls all of you know polymorphism what is polymorphism polymorphism means taking more than one form and polymorphism is classified into two as you know one into static polymorphism two into dynamic polymorphism static polymorphism can be achieved by function overloading all of you know that and dynamic polymorphism or you can say runtime polymorphism runtime polymorphism can be achieved by using the concept called virtual member functions so in this virtual member functions 
this concept we will use in inheritance only virtual member functions concept we use in inheritance a virtual member function is declared in the base class and redefined in the derived class that means if i take a member function in the base class which is declared but it is not defined declared in the sense girls only header of the function is there in the base class the statements the base class will not contain the definition that is statements of the function code of the function that will be redefined in the derived class whichever class is being uh, derived from that particular base class that class will inherit the will uh, will redefine the class function okay so now both uh now we can say both the base class as well as the derived class both the base class as well as the derived class have the same function name with the same arguments and same return type now the compiler doesn't know which function to call with function overloading that is static polymorphism the function name is same return type is same but the argument list is different so with the help of that argument list compiler knows what to call which which function to call but here all complete header is same both the base class and derived class contain the same function you can redefine it in the derived class so base class you have one function with the na same name same return type and same argument list and even the derived class also will have the same name same return type and same argument list so now the compiler doesn't know to which function to call so this is resolved at run time while running the program <coughs> so the hence it is known as uh, runtime polymorphism like by using the uh, runtime uh, virtual member functions we can achieve runtime polymorphism so how to call it how to call the base class version and derived class version we'll see that to make a member function as a uh, a virtual member function we have to use the keyword virtual so here there is an example you can see there is an example in this example base class contains a function called print it is a virtual function we have used the keyword virtual now the derived class and show method which is not virtual and the derived class which is derived from the base class also contains two functions print and show so when we come to this print is declared as a virtual function but not show so generally in inheritance we will create an object for derived class will not create an object for base class so here d is a object for derived class by using d if i call show function and print function then the derived class print function and show function will be executed so if i say d dot print then derived class print function then the statement print derived class function will be executed likewise d dot show then also show derived class will be executed now let us see how to resolve this one function i have made at virtual function and another function is non virtual function print is virtual function and uh, uh, show is non virtual function so here 
we have created a pointer object for the base class. The name is BPTR. BPTR is a base class pointer object. The D is the derived class object. So here BPTR pointer, I am assigning the address of D, ampersand D that is address of derived class. So that means BPTR is pointing to derived class now. BPTR is pointing to derived class. So when I say BPTR to print, it prints the derived class function. But when I say BPTR to show, it prints the base class show function. Because here virtual functions generally are binded at runtime. Runtime in the sense BPTR, if BPTR is pointing to derived class object, then the derived class print function will be called. In this example, BPTR is assigned derived class object. So, derived class print function is called. If I am not assigned, if I have assigned the base class reference, then base class function, print function will be displayed. But show function is a non-virtual function. So, that non-virtual function will be binded at compile time. While compiling the program itself, the non-virtual functions will be binded. So, whatever either it is a base pointer or a derived object, it calls only the derived class. I mean, BPTR is a base pointer. So, it calls the base class so fun show function. So, this is about virtual functions. I think you understood this concept. Simple in simple ways, virtual function means if a base class and derived class has the same function with the same argument list, then you have to make it a virtual function so that depending on the reference of the pointer object, particular version, either base version or derived version is called. If we don't make that as a virtual function, then binding process will be done at the compile time and whatever is your object, if it is a base object, base pointer object or a derived pointer object, it calls that particular function. So, this is about virtual functions. Now, let us see the concept of abstract classes. Abstract in the sense, not complete. So, here, when the implementation of the base class is not complete, then we say the base class is abstract. That means, when... Uh, for example, I have declared a function in the base, but I have not written the body. And the body function is written, uh, and the same function is redefined in the derived class. Then the base class is incomplete. Incomplete. Why it is incomplete? Because the function has only the header, but not the definition. And we cannot create objects for abstract classes. Uncompleted abstract means it's not completed. You can create objects for a complete class but not half defined classes. Why I am saying half defined means only the header part of the function will be there in the base class and the code, function code will be in the derived class. So, such classes are known as abstract classes. Now, already you have seen what is a virtual function. When we make a function as a virtual function, we will use the keyword virtual. Now, let us see what is pure virtual function. In this pure virtual function, the uh, virtual function will be implemented in the derived class. 
implemented in the derived class means only declared in the base class and defined in the derived class when i am declaring it i will assign zero in the base class so if you have seen this this is the syntax here this is a abstract class abstract classes generally are the base classes i can't define an abstract class as a derived class why because we can't create objects for the abstract classes in this abstract classes there is a pure virtual function called show so that means here show function is only declared and defined in the it will be defined in the derived class so when it is declared and assigned to zero then that virtual function is known as pure virtual function a class with pure virtual function is an abstract class at least one pure virtual function if is there in the class then it is an abstract class now let us see an example before going to the example once i'll take you back to the virtual functions here if you have seen this virtual functions the base class contains print function which is defined and show function show function is also defined here derived class contains print function and show function which are defined both are defined but the difference is show function is not virtual and print function is virtual virtual how i am saying it is virtual means in base class it is defined virtual so here the same function which is defined in both base and derived can be made as virtual functions when we come to pure virtual functions pure virtual functions here the base class will have zero that means only the header part defining will not be available in the base class defining will be available only in the derived class now here in this example you can see <coughs> excuse me in this example you have base class and derived class derived is derived from base now there is a variable in the base class there is one variable called x and one pure virtual function called fun why i am saying pure virtual function means it contains only the header which is equal to 0 and ended with a semicolon assigned to 0 while declaring the function so that is pure virtual function now there is one more function called get x which is defined that get x function is returning the value of x now derived class come to derived class now this is class base is an abstract class i think you understood why it is called as abstract class why because here fun function is a pure virtual function and that in the sense function does not contain body in the base it is not complete so when a function definition is not there it is not complete only declaration is there in the base so definition will be in the derived class now the derived class contains fun a variable called y and a function with the name fun in this already which is declared in the base now i am defining here function called Sorry. function called now in the main what i did is i've created an object for d derived and i'm calling function d dot fun so automatically i'll get that fun function is called okay so this is a combination of virtual functions and sorry uh, abstract classes and pure virtual functions if a class contains at least one pure virtual function then the class is known as 
abstract class here the base is an abstract class why because f u n is pure virtual function it is not declared in the base it is defined in the it is uh, not defined in the base it is defined in the derived class so i hope you understood that concept now multiple inheritance all of you know what is a multiple inheritance multiple inheritance means we will have more than one base classes a, a class is derived from more than one base classes if you see the figure here b and c two base classes we have and a is derived from b and c so the derived class a will be the syntax of that will be like this class derived name colon access mode base class 1 comma access mode base class 2 and so on you can define a class from more than two base classes now here why we are introducing again multiple inheritance means we are going to discuss about a special situation known as diamond problem diamond problem this i think this figure you can understand this is a hybrid inheritance where it is a combination of hierarchical and multiple inheritances so here a is a base class b and c are intermediate base classes and the d is a derived class so here why what is this diamond problem actually we'll discuss that when i create an object for d i'll call the members of b and members of c then automatically the value what is a common base class here a the functions of a are passed to d in two copies one through one via b class another via c class so here the d contains two copies of a and there the ambiguity arises and that problem is known as diamond problem i hope you understood uh let us let me show you an example here here there is a base class and uh, d1 is derived from base d2 is also derived from base and uh, oh, oh sorry girls there is a printing mistake in this i mean um, there is one more class i have to include before main that is der class that der class is inherited from d1 and d2 here okay now if i create an object for der class and i call the show function no need uh, der class when i create an object so automatically derived class function constructor is called as you know that derived class constructor calls the base class constructors so when i so uh, come here let us take this example because in this one uh, class is missing let us take this uh, let us take a as the base b as d1 c as d2 and d as der derived so for d i am creating an object when i create an object it calls the d constructor d constructor in turn calls the b constructor and c constructor b constructor calls the a constructor and c constructor also calls the a constructor so if this is the case in this uh, example <coughs> base class constructor is there d1 constructor is there d2 constructor is there and der constructor will be there so when i create an object for der 
the output will be like this. Base constructor is called first, then D1 constructor is called, then again base constructor is called, then D2 constructor is called, then the last derived constructor is called. Base constructor here, it is called twice. When this, I, mean, I have used default constructor, so there is a no problem. If I have used parameteral constructors, then two values will be passed to the base, one from D1 and another from D2, which causes an ambiguity. To avoid that problem, that is that problem is known as diamond problem. To avoid that problem, when we are deriving the D classes D1 and D2, we will use a keyword called virtual. So if I use both for here you can see, here you can see class D1 colon virtual public base. That means public derivation of base in virtual mode. So and here also you can see D2 virtual base virtual public base. So D2 is also derived from the base which is public derivation but I have used a keyword called virtual before deriving D1 and D2. When I use that keyword virtual only one copy will be pass it to base class constructor. That is, here you can see the output. This, this is the output if I have used virtual. This is the output if I have not used virtual. So, where base constructor is called twice. But if I use the virtual keyword while deriving, then base class constructor is called only once. Then D1 constructor, then D2 constructor and before D2 base is not called. Why? Because base is already called and then derived class constructor. So that is the diamond problem. By using the virtual keyword, we can remove that ambiguity of diamond. I mean getting two copies of base to the derived class. Thank you girls. With this we complete the inheritance concept. In the next session we will deal with C++ streams. Thank you girls.